Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Blue Rail Studios. This is part two of the 2020 wrap up party for Blue Rail Studios. If you have not seen part one, I'll leave a link somewhere, like probably right there. Uh, if you have not seen that episode where I'm talking about the regular Blu rays and the 4Ks that have joined the Blu ray family, you can check that out there. If you want to dive into some collector's editions that have joined the Blu ray family, stay right here. Let's dive into a brand new episode of Blu ray Studios. Roll the intro! So to start off this episode, we're going to talk about The Shining. This is the 4K Collector's Edition and I love this thing. Like, Look at the artwork, Jack Nicholson with the max. Like, on the background we have red rum, or in mirror form it's called murder. This collection comes with the 4K, which I, I have to say this artwork is beautiful. 4K version of the film, a booklet that is comprised of like poster designs, uh, stills from the film of course. You have to love it, you have to love it, right? And of course biographies from our actors and the director of the film in like this old type of style. I like it a lot, I mean it's it's great reading when you're on a toilet even though I would never bring my Blu-ray on a toilet but you know what I mean. And this comes with a little packaging which has some poster designs, some photos from behind the scenes, the poster, which I won't really open, oh, I'll, I'll do it, I'll just open it up because I know you want to see it and you're like, why didn't you open up the poster? And I'm like, I'm sorry I didn't, but you know what, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just open it up. This poster, I love this poster because look at how terrifying it is. It has nothing to do with the film, but look at how terrifying it is. It's crazy. It's like the stuff of nightmares right there. Jesus Christ. Sear into my brain. <laughs> so this is a letter from Stanley Kubrick to the graphic designer in charge of creating posters. And he has some notes on which posters he likes and which he doesn't. And he's very straightforward and honest about it. Yeah, like why would you include that? I'm glad you did, but who comes up with that shit? Great, great uh, collection edition. I love the contents of this uh, collection. Up next, we have one of the best comedies ever made, starring John Belushi and Dan Aykroyd. The Blues Brothers came out with a collector's edition last year, including this beautiful steelbook. With the film on 4K, like, yes, thank you. Also comes with a booklet, of course, with behind the scenes stuff, production notes, synopsis, and Harry Fisher, oh my god, what a dream. Yes, this is the poster, which I'll also, I'll, I'll, I'll stay consistent, right? I'll, I'll, I'll stay consistent and I'll open these, these posters up, even though it's a pain in the ass. <laughs> yeah, great poster, great film, uh, it's, it's hilarious, it's, it's charming, it's well made. You know, and if you're a comedy fan, you're gonna have to see it at some point. This steelbook is reason enough to pick it up. It's beautiful. It's absolutely stunning. Up next, we have a film that I only recently saw, and I discussed this film on a previous episode of Blue Rail Studios. Um, but with the sequel coming out, well, first it would come out last year, it has been pushed to this year, and I want to see it in theaters. Please let me see Top Gun Maverick because I picked up. Top Gun, the collector's edition. Look at this design. Tom Cruise and his impeccable hair. Uh, it also comes with a steelbook, which is the same artwork, but it looks just phenomenal. I love steelbooks, as you guys know, but to have a steelbook in a collector's edition, that's like the, the dream combination right there. It also comes with this package. Let's have a quick look inside because I, I know you guys kind of want to see that. Again, a poster. Uh, I have to open it up now. Yeah, I have to open it up. Damn it. Damn it. I'll just open it up. A uh, quick question for any collectors out there. If you get like a poster like this, do you actually hang it on your wall? I want to know because I don't. I, I leave it all in the package because I want to keep it complete. 
complete screenplay written out. Then we have another booklet, Tom Cruise in Top Gun, with a lot of like stills from the film and behind the scenes the production notes, the whole thing. And of course, you have some stills from the movie. Stills you can also see by watching the movie. <laughs> Arrow Video had a great year as well last year and some great releases. I picked up Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, um, a film I had never seen, but it stars Johnny Depp and Benicio Del Toro and directed by Terry Gilliam. So it's like a classic, a cult classic, and I had never seen it, and picking up this collector's edition was a great way for me to, to finally pick it up. And of course it comes with bonus content, the Blu-ray on a reversible sleeve. Uh, we have the poster, which again, once you, when, once you start something, you have to commit to it, right? So I'm gonna have to open this thing up again. This fucking thing, like, this, like, this is actually pretty cool. This is actually pretty cool. Nice. And a booklet with production notes, the whole thing again. Uh, yeah, I mean, Arrow Video has like the best and most consistent collector's editions. Uh, I talked about the Robocop one in a previous episode. Um, which was also great in terms of bonus content and like, I love the packaging. It's really sturdy. It's it's it keeps your Blu-ray safe and secure, so that you can feel safe and secure. <laughs> All right, up next, let's just dive into some collector's editions that I know you're kind of here for, right? We all we all understand, right? That we want to talk about this kind of stuff. The Titans of Cult Collector's Edition, like, we all know we want to talk about that, right? We're all in agreement here? Alright, so first up we have For Vendetta, fantastic film, which I rewatched after acquiring this one, uh, and it's eerily topical. Like, there is a virus, there is a curfew, there is government mandated censorship the whole thing there's a lot that is actually pretty topical there are elections that are controversial yeah there's a lot it was actually eerie to see how much of that film is actually topical and if V for Vendetta pans out more like a documentary than it does a movie but yeah V for Vendetta fantastic release by Titan of Cult with a sleeve for your steelbook and the steelbook itself, Natalie Portman, is stunning as always, but V on the background. I mean, I gotta love it. Blu-ray, 4K, the whole thing. But what really intrigued me about this release is actually what was packaged with it. A mini steelbook. First of its kind, not really first of its kind, but first one I've actually got my hands on. This is a mini steelbook. <laughs> you can see it right here. V for Vendetta, V on the back, and within it is a pin. So Times of Cult are kind of differenti differentiating themselves, making them a unique brand by packaging a collectible pin with each and every release. And I love it. What a great idea. And this is the pin you get for V for Vendetta in a mini steelbook. Like, Going above and beyond. I have one of my favorite films of all time, Goodfellas. Titans of Cult releasing a Martin Scorsese picture. Yes, thank you so much. I already have a steal for Goodfellas, but getting this one with the 4K version is a dream come true because it's like it's one of the best looking movies of all time. And watching it in 4K has been an absolute treat. Again, with the custom pin. Beautiful. Beautiful. And then of course we have the steelbook, which I gotta be honest, I like the design, but not as much as I want it to. So now we have to do this, right? Gotta position it right there. Now I am a good fella. Look at that. Don't it look great in suit and tie? <laughs> On the back we have a gun and a shot of whiskey, which is like the best summary of this movie. <laughs> Three discs, we have the Blu-ray, and then we have bonus features. Yes, thank you so much. Titans of Cold are literally knocking out of the park again and again. But <laughs> the bonus content within this uh, collector's edition is like so charming and amazing. It comes with this little envelope, right? 
Heinz of Culp on the front, Goodfellas on the back. But the contents of this envelope will surprise you. It is Mama Scorsese's meat sauce and meatball recipe. And it is exactly as described. It's a recipe. <laughs> yes, that is perfect. Perfect. And of course, the perfect shot. On the I was always fascinated with this shot. Like slicing the garlic, garlic so thin it melts away in the, in the, in the pot. Yes, can we just... Tiny Cult, yes, you understand us. You understand one of the reasons why we love this movie so much. Yes. Martin Scorsese's meat sauce and meatball recipe. Yes, thank you. But it doesn't stop there. I acquired more Titans of Cult Collector's Edition. All but one. I really wanted the Batman 1989 one. Oh man, I really wanted to get that one, but I was too late with my pre-orders because they went live at 1 a.m. in the freaking morning. By the time I got up, they were completely sold out. Completely sold out, which was unfortunate. But I still got my hands on two more. Coming up with 2001 A Space Odyssey. A film that is a classic for a reason. This film came out in 1968, even before Star Wars was released, which is praised to this day for its special effects, which don't hold a candle to 2001 A Space Odyssey. And again, we have a custom pin with the Dawn of Man and a patch from the United States Astronaut Agency Clavius Base, which is a nice touch to include. And of course, we have the Steelbook, a 4K Steelbook for one of the best looking films ever made. 2001 A Space Odyssey, the 4K Steelbook. Of course, you have three discs in it, 4K, the regular Blu-ray, and the bonus features. I watched it when I got it in 4K quality. It is a stunning movie to look at. The special effects are mind-blowing to this day. The I, I couldn't tell you how they captured certain shots. Do I love it though? No. I want to say like the last act becomes too much for me. There are certain sequences, uh, landscape shots that are alien looking because they wanted to go for like this alien world. And they used uh, helicopter shots of landscapes on Earth, obviously because you can't really fly around on Mars, can you? Um, but they use that kind of those shots and they put them through a coloring um, process to make them look alien and those shots don't hold up and they take so long it's like literally five to ten minutes or at least it feels like that uh, of nothing but those shots of these swooping landscape shots with these weird colors and unfortunately it doesn't really hold up all that well and it kind of took me out of the film but then the ending of it all is really strong, really well made, how the perspective shifts, how our main character sees someone walking around, we shifted that perspective, and how that is used to um, portray the passage of time. It's really great stuff there, and Kubrick is a genius, is a master, and this film proves it, but it's not a film I'm gonna rewatch over and over again. Certain shots, certain moments, Feel kind of dated it is slow paced to hell which I like I like that in this kind of film especially when you have so many shots that are legitimately amazing the space station shots the shifting of gravity in shot it's crazy it's crazy that they did this in 1968 and it still holds up blows my mind and watching the 4k is a treat but it's not the perfect film in my opinion. A film that I can watch over and over again, and especially thanks to Titans of Cold picking it up for their release, is Pacific Rim. Like, yes. I am in a kaiju mood, uh, which I will talk to talk about in a in a following episode about some steel books that may or may not <laughs> uh, be discussed. And of course, Godzilla vs Kong coming out this year finally. Uh, but I have been in a kaiju mood. I have watched every single kaiju film that I own, from Pacific Rim to Pacific Rim Uprising, Godzilla, Kong, the whole thing. 
And uh, with this release, yes, the pin obviously is a win, but this deal book, like, oh my god, look at this. Just gypsy danger. And we have the two disc Blu ray and 4K, but the steel book, it's, it's, look at it. All of these lines are debossed, so you can feel them. You can feel them. I mean, yes, this steel book is a win. This movie is a win. And I cannot wait for Kong uh, uh, to take on Godzilla. And I don't, I don't know who I want to win. <laughs> I don't know. I love them both. Like, if the film is good, then we all win. It doesn't really matter who loses, right? Let's top off this episode uh, of the 2020 wrap-up party with one more collector's edition. It's a collection I've been looking for for a long time, and I held off on buying it because I own it on DVD, which would clue you in as to what series I'm talking about. But I found it online for a great price, a price that you would never ever find again for this packaging. And it is, of course, the one Blu-ray set to rule them all. Lord of the Rings extended cut on Blu-ray. I mean, the 4Ks have been released, which I have pre-ordered. They're on their way. I can't wait for them to get here, finally. Uh, but this is like one of my favorite movie trilogies of all time. I have fond memories of sitting in the theater with my nephew, with the whole family, in fact, watching this movie, this trilogy, and loving every second of it. And the extended cuts are for the diehard fans like myself. I prefer the theatrical cuts, um, which I already own on Blu-ray, but I, yeah, I have a soft spot for these because it's more of the stuff I love. Like, look at the shine of this gold on my face! It's crazy, right? <laughs> yeah, but picking this up was like a dream come true because I yeah, I love this series. I'm a completionist in that respect. And picking this up on Blu-ray is always a treat. If you get a choice, if you can watch them in DVD quality, compressed audio, the whole thing, or you can watch them in Blu-ray quality, like, bro, like, there is, there is no competition. This is one of the best movie trilogies I've ever made. And picking this one up on an extended cut on Blu-ray is always a win. Now, when I picked it up, though, I realized something. Like, uh, you know. It's, Beautiful packaging, no harm, no foul, love it. And of course the Blu-rays set, which yeah, love it. Fellowship of the Ring, The Two Towers, and Return of the King. Still, like nothing really suspicious going on until you turn uh, turn around and you're like, oh, that's the language I don't know. What is that, Italian? And I was like, oh, this might not be the version I wanted to pick up. And then I open it up and I'm like, Wait a minute. Il ritorno del re. That's not a language I speak. Il ritorno del re. Il, sig il signore degli anelli. Uh, I have no idea if this is actually correct. <laughs> but yeah, obviously it's not in Dutch or even in English, which kind of worried me until I look at the back. And it comes with English audio. English subtitles, so I'm, I'm fine. It's totally, it's totally fine. I'm not even worried about it. You know, I, I can read English, I can speak English, and Elvish, and Dwarfish. No, seriously, it's fantastic that I finally acquired this beauty of a release. Um, it's one of like the best film series ever made, and I cannot wait for the 4K to arrive so I can gush about those films again to you guys. <laughs> So that concludes part two of this 2020 wrap up party. This was the collector's editions video up next. The moment you all have been waiting for a little hint right there, the steel books that I acquired last year and they're quite plentiful. <laughs> damn, like damn. There are so many steel books I picked up last year. I, I also plan on doing or redoing my steelbook collection video because 
in terms of audio mixing and all and editing it's it's like the worst video i have but yet it has the most views because a lot of people want to see steelbook collection videos so i want to do like a new version of it which uh will probably come like next month i want to say i don't want to put a date on it because i know myself and i can like miss dates and the whole thing you know you know how it is how it, right but i want to put these videos out first to wrap up 2020 and start off the new year uh hopefully consistently uploading and not putting myself in this position where I have to talk about like a hundred freaking movies <laughs> that I picked up um, but to can top off this video I have one more surprise for you guys one more collector's edition and it's the biggest one I picked up last year Dawn of the Dead the collector's edition look at how ginormous this thing is spoiler alert there is so much content in this in this box and we have the back when there's no more room in hell the dead will walk the earth Fantastic. open up this packaging oh man oh man oh man i know what is in this box set so i'm already excited so let's start off with the first collection of discs yeah, there are several collections of discs in this package. Dawn of the Dead's beautiful artwork. Look at that. And then we have the disc, four discs, and look at this artwork. Can we get a break, please? Uh, this is the theatrical cut, the extended con cut. Then we have the Argento cut, as well as the special features. I mean, why have two cuts when you have three cuts of the film and bonus features? But they were not content with that. They wanted to give you more bank for your buck and they put in three more discs with soundtracks. Original soundtrack by Goblin, the Wolf Library Compilation and the Wolf Library Compilation Part 2, which from what I can gather are just basically the soundtracks for the Argento cut. Then we have two, count them, two books, one hardcover which is called Dissecting the Dead with its very own custom artwork and it's comprised of essays, interviews, reviews uh, of the film, films, different posters from around the world, artworks, the whole thing. It's fantastic. Um, I mean, like, fantastic, fantastic. And then of course, last but not least, we have a novelization of the screenplay to the film with custom artwork again did you know there was supposed to be a puppy in this story I realized that after reading excerpts of this book there was supposed to be a puppy in this <laughs> this film so what you're telling me that it could have been even better than it was. <laughs> I downloaded that. It's it's classic for a reason. I watched it for the first time after acquiring acquiring this this Blu-ray set. I had never watched it, even though I owned the DVD. I started watching it at some point and never finished it. I don't know why, because it's legitimately a fun, well-made film, especially given the budget constraints. It's crazy what they have managed to capture in camera. It's fantastic. I love this film. It's it's phenomenal. I want to say this though before you put in your order uh, I have come to realize that ordering from Zavi might not be a great idea anymore because the recent packages that I've gotten from them um, including that one they come with a customs fee that you only have to pay once the mailman is at your doorstep with the package and you're like I can only give it to you once you pay me a customs fee which in some cases is like a lot, like a lot, like as much as you pay for the product you ordered. And I've come to realize that it might, might be better to stop purchasing through Zavi.com because I realized that this customs fee is, is a result of Brexit. Damn it. It was really disappointing figuring that out because I paid a lot for that Blu-ray set, uh, pre-ordering it, which given the contents, it might be worth it if you're a fan of, of the series, if you're a fan of Giorgio Romero's, then it might be worth it. I do think it's a high price. 
add to that the customs fee and it becomes not worth it, in my opinion. If you can pick it up without having to pay that customs fee, if you can find a way to acquire it without having to pay that, I would say pick it up because it's a beautiful collector's edition. It is phenomenal, I love it. It's. I'm happy that I, that I own it. I just wish I hadn't paid as much for it as I did. Had, had I known that beforehand, I probably wouldn't have picked it up. That's probably the best way to describe my feeling at this moment. So I am kind of disappointed that I can't really do business anymore with Zavi. I like, I love their reps, I love their their supplies, I love their collection, I love their, like, uh, I love their product so much. And I have spent a lot of money there. <laughs> a lot more than I'm willing to admit, to be honest. But it looks like that's over now because I can't really, I can't pay double. I cannot be asked to pay double for something. That is already kind of up there in terms of price. You know, buying Steelbook for $30. I'm willing to do that if I love the movie and if I love the steelbook. It's a high price to pay for a movie, um, but if I have, if I have, I have to pay thirty dollars on top of that, the customs fees, no. So yeah, be mindful of that once you if you're living in the EU and you're buying from Zavi, be mindful of customs fees popping their ugly little heads up. I pre-ordered this, these, a lot of these collections when there weren't any customs fees present, but by the time I got to them, I was like, hey, you gotta pay a customs fee, and like, oh shit. Yeah, it's disheartening. Certainly, it's disheartening. Um, so, Zavi, thank you so much for our business over the past few years. You have an amazing, um, I wish this will all be resolved in some way, shape, or form. That this customs fee can be like can disappear <laughs> rather sooner than later. Because ah man, but be mindful of that, especially when you're buying a box set like that, which is up there in terms of pricing. You're not gonna spend 30 bucks on that. You're gonna spend a lot more. If you add customs fees to that, you're gonna spend too much. It's too much, it's not worth it in my opinion, even though it's a fantastic box set, but the price for pre-ordering it was already on the high end, especially when you pre-ordered the 4K, which I didn't. I, I chose the regular Blu-ray because it was cheaper. But if you are if you want the 4K, I'm just gonna say don't do it. There's a separate 4K release for Dawn of the Dead, which is not this box set, but a different one, a smaller one, which is a lot more reasonable in pricing. If you want to pick up that, I would say go for it, but be mindful of this customs fee. I'm saying it again. Public service announcement. This customs fee will, will, will mess you up. All right, that's it. Thank you so much for watching this episode. We're going to dive into part three in a minute. The Steelbooks are up next. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't seen part one, Links in the description, there's an, an annotation like right here. So uh, check it out if you get a chance. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you on the next one. Ciao.